Welcome to the Virtual Coffee Lab. Thanks so much for joining me today. We're going to be talking about the 10 most common mistakes that new home roasters make when they get started in the hobby. So let's get right to it. Home coffee roasting is a great hobby. But it's not without its challenges, and so today we're going to take a look at the 10 most common mistakes that new home coffee roasters often make when they get started in the hobby. And honestly, uh, even seasoned home coffee roasters can make some of these mistakes as well. So let's get started. First is safety. Safety is something that sometimes is overlooked, but we need to remember that we're dealing with high temperatures, and in some cases we're dealing with um, mechanical equipment that can be hazardous. So for example, there are uh, home coffee roasters that are using hybrid type roasters, uh, hot air popcorn poppers that have been modified or aren't really designed to be used to roast coffee, and then also um, devices like bread makers and heat guns that are being used. And this is really cool. This is a great way to roast coffee, but it isn't without its hazards. So you should always make sure you take all the safety precautions necessary. Be sure that you don't have any exposed wiring or that you are protected from any hazards of burn. And always, always, always have a fire extinguisher handy. Number two is getting to know the coffee beans. So when we roast coffee, every type of coffee we roast is going to be different. Different altitudes, different densities, different size beans, different process, whether it's a washed or a dry or something in between like a honey. And it's important for us to know what we're roasting and so we can anticipate how to correct that or adjust for that when we roast our coffee. Often home roasters don't have second chances to get a coffee right. They're buying one pound at a time. And so it's good to be able to understand how different types of coffee can influence how you're going to roast that coffee, how the temperatures may be impacted, how your roasting times will change, and ultimately the impact on your coffee cup. Number three, keep a journal. A lot of home roasters are not making notes or keeping journals of each of their roasts. And what you can do is you can learn from your mistakes simply by referencing a previous roast. Have you ever gone through a roast and said, man, this is perfect, I wish I could repeat this? If you'd make notes about exactly what you did, maybe you changed the temperature, maybe you left it in longer, maybe you removed a lid to let more heat escape to slow down the roast. Whatever you're doing, whatever device you're using, you can alter the roast profile by making changes to the environment, uh, by making changes to um, the amount of power that's being applied or energy or the amount of air that's being applied or again, the type of beans that are being used. So I would encourage you to take notes, keep a journal, and reference those because if you want and you're making notes, you can repeat exactly what you did in the previous roast. The fourth is um, home roasters quickly will drink their coffee or they will let it rest for too long of a time and then the coffee loses its life. So what I'm talking about is new home roasters will roast coffee and then they'll drink it right away and they don't let the coffee rest. So my recommendation and most people's recommendation is to roast the coffee and then wait a day, at least one day. Some people will tell you longer than that and depending upon the type of coffee, say it's a dry process coffee, you may want to wait another two or three days before it becomes lively. The best thing that you can really do though is find out for yourself. So go ahead and brew some right away. Brew some a day later, two days later, and three days later, and see if you notice a difference. And that way, you'll be able to have the best possible cup of coffee within a certain period of time, uh, and you'll really enjoy it. Number five, home roasters will tend to either roast too light or too dark. So what I mean by that is, is that they're not watching the color of the beans, they're not smelling the coffee, they're not listening to the coffee, and they tend to either drop the beans too early or not early enough. Uh, and like for some hybrid roasters, they don't have a really great way to cool their beans, so they continue to roast a little bit, and then you end up going darker than you want. 
So pay attention to your times, pay attention to the color of the beans, pay attention to the texture of the beans. Once you get past first crack and you're in this development stage, watch how the bean starts to wrinkle. And then you'll know that that could be very close to an optimum time to drop your coffee if you're looking for maximum coffee flavor and not necessarily a well-developed or a darker roast coffee. Number six is, is that a lot of roasters will roast too short of a time or too long of a time. Don't confuse that with too light or too dark because what happens is if you roast coffee really quick, then the coffee chemical reactions that take place within the coffee when the bean gets hot, they don't have a chance to take place. And so all of the flavors, all of the sweetness, the caramelization, uh, or some of the other um, chemical reactions with uh, the coffee bean itself, where you get some of your acidity, the fruitiness, and some of those other uh, tasting notes, those will be completely distorted or lacking. If you're too long, you'll completely flatten the cup or bake the coffee and you won't have much but brown water or paper or kind of a woody woody taste. So pay attention to the length of time. If you have questions about that, I did a video on the three, um, I think it was three tips for home coffee roasters and check that link out. That video talks about uh, roasting profile, talks about the roasting times and percentages and that might give you a little bit of an idea of what I'm talking about as far as too long or too short within your roasting time and your roasting profile. Number seven, and again, these aren't in any order. Number seven is that home roasters aren't preheating the roasters. So when we roast coffee, it's great to be able to have an environment that's ready to roast the beans. We wanna get those beans hot and warmed up quickly not too quickly, but not too slowly. So we want to be able to warm these beans up to a temperature where the, from the inside out thoroughly all the way through, the beans are gonna be dry. And the moisture is, uh, it gets to a point where the color changes and then we go from dry into the middle phase where all of our flavors are developed. So we want this to be a specific period of time and if you're not preheating your roaster, it may take you longer to get up to that roast, uh, that dry time, or you may be roasting the coffee more on the outside than the inside. If you have a hot environment, then those beans are touching that hot environment and they are basically conducting the heat from bean to bean, surface bean to bean. That's called conductive heating. And then later on in the roast, we want to really focus on convection heating where we introduce more air. So that's a common mistake that a lot of roasters um, especially drum roasters are doing is they're not waiting long enough to preheat the roasters before they begin their first roast. Number eight is uh, housekeeping. One of the most common mistakes that home coffee roasters make is they don't have good housekeeping when it comes to their roasting environment. They'll have things laying on the floor, they'll have uh, stuff laid out and not packaged away and the environment gets dirty. It's important to have a clean, organized environment so that you're not tripping over something or moving in a hurry where you could get hurt or ultimately, um, you know, your equipment needs to be cleaned, your surfaces need to be cleaned. It's best to have those things um, kept tidy. For those of you that are using hot air systems where there is air being drawn in, if you've got a chaff all over the place, it's going to get sucked into that. It's going to clog up your system. It's going to clog up your roaster. So you want to be aware of that and just um, use good housekeeping practices. All right, number nine is community. A lot of home coffee roasters will read some things online and they will uh, start to try to roast coffee by themselves and they'll get frustrated and they will get discouraged and a lot of times they'll just say forget it it's not worth it or they'll waste money buying a roaster and things aren't working out and they get frustrated and they've just you know wasted time and wasted money so I would encourage you to get involved in the coffee community there are many different outlets for the community of course there's this channel you can write and leave your comments and interact with me and, and I'll 
do my best to interact with you and answer your questions. There are forums. There's places on Facebook. There are places on websites like Home Barista and uh, other places like Reddit where coffee um, discussions, roasting discussions are taking place every day. So I would encourage new home coffee roasters to look around and get involved in these communities and ask questions, read and learn. And then when you have gotten better and you have kind of started to figure this all out, you can help other new home coffee roasters uh, as they're getting started. That's how the community works. Speaking of community, I want to thank you guys for being here today and I would encourage you to subscribe to my community, to like this video and if you really like what you see here and you want to be notified, hit the bell icon and that way you'll be notified when new videos are uploaded. Alright, and last but not least, have fun roasting your coffee. That's what this hobby is all about. It's not in, obviously it's about roasting great coffee and I'll tell you what you're gonna roast some great coffee because most of the coffee being served out there when you go to a drive-thru and you order coffee you're gonna have a better cup of coffee from something you roasted at home than anything that most of these places is gonna be able to provide for you but have fun doing that enjoy the hobby grow and learn in the experience and you'll really uh, receive the wonderful benefit of an awesome cup of coffee so I would encourage you to do that. Well, I hope you like what you've heard. Thank you so much for joining me today. And again, I would love to hear your comments. Let me know what you're roasting on. Tell me what you think about these 10 mistakes that are common uh, for new home coffee roasters. And if there's something that I left off or you think there's other mistakes that people make, share those in the comments. I'd love to hear them and so would other viewers as well. So thank you so much for joining me today. Have a great day and we'll see you next week in the lab.